Седьмая глава, текст 16. Омного Магаведе Васудевая. 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 I must say I'm, I'm very impressed to see the enthusiasm of the devotees here in, in Latvia. Я должен признаться, что вижу очень большой энтузиазм среди преданных в Латвии. Fired up. Очень вдохновлены. Good energy. Много энергии. So this is a, a very important verse in Bhagavad Gita. Это один из важных стихов Бхагавад Гиты. Tato vidha bhajan temam jana sukhutin arjana artha yugyasa artha arthi kyani chabha artarshiva. So maybe we could just uh, do the translation and the, uh, let's see how long the trip goes. Okay, yeah, go ahead. О лучший из Барат, четыре типа праведников встают на путь преданного служения мне. Страждущий, ищущий богатство, любознательный и те, кто стремится постичь абсолютную истину. Комментарий. В отличие от грешников неверующих, люди, перечисленные в этом стихе, следуют предписаниям Шастер. Их называют Супритина, праведниками, потому что они чтут священные писания, соблюдают нормы морали и законы государства и в том или ином степени преданы Верховному Господу. Такие благочестивые люди делятся на четыре категории – страждущие, нуждающиеся в деньгах, любознательные и стремящиеся постичь абсолютную истину. Эти люди обращаются к Верховному Господу и преданно служат Ему, преследуя при этом различные цели. Поскольку они служат Господу, чтобы осуществить свои собственные желания, их нельзя назвать чистыми преданными. Чистому преданному служению чужды корысти и стремления к материальной выгоде. Определение чистого преданного служения дано в Бхактире Самрита Синду. Они обвела Ашита Шумям, Яна Карма, Яна Бритам, Ану Плена, Кришна Ношила нам Бхактиру Тама. Трансцендентным преданным служением Верховному Господу Кришне занимается тот, кто служит Ему с любовью и полностью свободен от стремления к материальной выгоде или успеху на поприще кармической деятельности и философских изысканий. Такое преданное служение называется чистым. Встав на путь преданного служения Верховному Господу и общаясь с чистыми преданными, эти четыре типа праведников полностью очищаются от материальной скверны и тоже становятся чистыми преданными. Что касается нечестивцев, то им очень трудно заниматься преданным служением, потому что они эгоистичны, не следуют предписаниям шаста и не стремятся к духовным целям. Но если кому-нибудь из них посчастливится встретить чистого преданного и пообщаться с ним, то даже такие люди могут стать чистыми преданными. Люди, поглощенные кармической деятельностью, обращаются к Господу, когда попадают в беду, и общаясь с чистым преданным, сами становятся преданными Господа. Те, кто просто разочаровался в жизни, тоже иногда приходят чистым преданным и хотят узнать что-нибудь о Боге. Точно так же, когда философы гьяни отчаиваются найти истину в разных областях знания, у них возникает желание познать Бога, и они начинают преданное служение Господу. Занимаясь преданным служением Господу, они поднимаются на, над уровнем познания безличного Брахмана и Параматмы в сердце каждого и по милости Господа и Его чистого преданного понимают, что Бог является Личностью. Итак, когда страждущие, любознательные, стремящиеся к знанию и нуждающиеся в деньгах убеждаются, что материальные блага не способствуют духовному развитию и избавляются от всех материальных желаний, они становятся чистыми преданными. Пока преданные не достигнут уровня чистоты, их служение Господу будет осквернено, примесями кармической деятельности, стремления к мирскому знанию и так далее. Чтобы подняться на уровень чистого преданного служения, надо избавиться от всего этого. Ваши капоти, гостья, крепостные девочки, паритана, хавни, любящие деги, джайши, кришна, чайтанья, праводитяна, дашия, вайтагана, шивасти, горба, 
So Krishna here is saying that there's four types of people who uh, who devote themselves to him. Здесь Кришна говорит, что есть четыре типа людей, которые обращаются к нему. And these are pious souls. И это благочестивые души. But these persons are all approaching Krishna with some selfish motive. Но эти личности они обращаются к Кришне с какими-то мотивациями корыстными. Which is the beginning of one's relationship with God. Которые начинаются вот эти мотивации устанавливают хоть какие-то отношения с Богом. So the first thing Krishna mentions here is the distress. И первое, кого он называет здесь Кришна, это страждущие. Many people approach God because they're distressed. Многие люди обращаются к Богу из-за того, что они находятся в страданиях. Just like when our uh, Hare Krishna movement began in 1966, many people were searching about what is the goal of life. Когда наше движение началось в 1966 году, то в то время множество людей не искали абсолютную истину. В чем же смысл жизни? Because uh, at that time, in 1966, there was a Vietnam War. Потому что в 1966 году была Вьетнамская война. And in America, many youth had to go to war. И в Америке множество молодых людей, подростков, им нужно было отправляться на войну. So they were very distressed about this. И они очень переживали в большом замешательстве. And therefore many people started thinking, well, what's the goal of life? Why am I here? И поэтому множество людей начало задаваться вопросом, для чего я здесь? В чем же смысл моей жизни? So in their distressed condition, they started searching. И в этом таком страдальном положении они искали истину. And many of them came in contact with Krishna consciousness. И многие из них они соприкоснулись с созданием Кришны. Because when one is in, in distress, then one naturally uh, calls out to God. И когда человек находится в страданиях, то естественно он обращается к Богу. Just like I had one friend who who had to go to war in Vietnam. And he went with one group of other soldiers. There was about 200 of them. And they were dropped from helicopters with parachutes. In the forest of Vietnam. So as soon as they started landing, they were, they were getting shot by the Vietnamese. So American soldiers were falling down dead all over the place. So this friend of mine, he was shocked. And he started screaming out to God, please, God, save me. He started screaming out, God, save me. He just fell on his knees and started praying to God. So only eight of those 200 survived. And he was one of them. And then shortly after that, maybe a couple months after that, he, would, he would, came back to, he went back to America. And shortly after that, he was, uh, he was freed from the army. And then he met some devotees. And he got a book. And he was reading the book and he said, oh, this is very nice. So he became a devotee. 
So he, he cried out so loud to God that God, he heard his words and he got a book and became a devotee. Он так громко взывался слезами на глазах Господу, и Господь закликнулся на его молитву, дав ему книгу. When one is in distress, it's natural to call out to God. Тот, кто находится в страданиях, естественно для него взывать Господу. There's another interesting story of a person from Estonia. И еще интересная история об одном человеке из Эстонии. He was a young man, about 18. And he had gotten involved in many you know, criminal activities and drugs, and he was he was feeling that he had to get away. So he told his mother that he's going to go traveling. И ему нужно было уйти из этого общения, и он сказал своей матери, что он отправится в путешествие. Get away from all the bad associations, his old friends and everything. Оставить всех своих старых друзей. So he just went traveling. И отправился в путешествие. And while he was traveling, he got a, he developed a, a spiritual quest. И когда он путешествовал, у него внутри пробудилось это чувство вопрошения. And therefore, he ended up in India. And while in India, he received one of Prabhupada's books. And he liked it very much. And he started practicing. And then he found the devotees. And he was able to eventually move into the Chaupati temple in Bombay. So he was very happy. Now before he met the devotees, he was already traveling for a couple of years. And then after living with the devotees for a couple of years, he decided to call his mother and let him know what's happening with his life. И когда он уже начал утвердился в общении с преданными, то он позвонил своей матери и рассказал том, чем он занимается. So it was four years. Это было четыре года. So he called his mother and he was telling him, yeah, I'm, I'm in India now. I've been doing a lot of traveling. Он сказал, что я сейчас в Индии, я путешествую, занимаюсь служением. And he said, oh, and by the way, I'm a monk now. И помимо того, я сейчас монах. And she said, "You're a monk." I can't believe it. This is amazing. So she said, "So which which order are you in? What, what type of a monk are you?" He said, "I'm a Hari Krishna monk." And she said, "Well, Hari Bol." <laughs> He said, I'm a Hare Krishna too. <laughs> and she was already initiated. <laughs> and he was still a bhakta. <laughs> so, uh, the books get around, you know. <laughs> Do you know who this is? Somebody know who this is? Maybe some of you know who that is, no? I don't know, I forgot his name, but if you're not far from Estonia, I thought some of you might know him. <laughs> no. So, he was very distressed, and he took shelter of God, and he became very happy. And now we have this, uh, this global financial crisis. So this is good for preaching. Yeah. People are in difficulty, so uh, God is not a poor man. And therefore some people they go to God for wealth. Yeah. And sometimes even people they pray to God, 
God, please give us our daily bread. Uh, but, I mean, this is pious. It's nice, though. But God is giving food to all living entities. So we as human beings, we don't have to pray to God for food. But what we should pray to God, as, as is mentioned here, is that we should pray for unmotivated, uninterrupted service. So we're not interested in having uh, bread business with God. Нас не интересуют отношения бизнеса, хлебного бизнеса с Богом. Just like imagine you have a, a little son, it's an eight-year-old son. Как я уже говорил, вот есть сын ему восемь лет. And every morning your son goes up to you and says, Father, Mother, will you give me bread today? И этот сын подходит вот к вам, к родителям, и спрашивает, «О, дорогой мам, дорогая мама, дорогой папа, дадите, дадите мне себе хлеба, накормите меня». Please, father, mother, give me bread today. Пожалуйста, мама и папочка, дайте мне хлеба сегодня. And every morning the son comes up to him and says this. И вот каждое утро вот так вот сын подходит к своему отцу и к маме. The parents are going to start thinking something's wrong up there. You know? <laughs> so we don't have to pray to our Father for bread. But we should feel gratitude to God and pray for service. So another uh, reason people go to God is that people are sometimes inquisitive. They want to know what is God about, what is, what is spiritual life about. Just like I, I grew up a Christian. But many of the uh, ideas of, of the Christian theology just couldn't, I, I just couldn't uh, accept. For instance, that if you're sinful, then you go to hell and you burn forever. So I, I just thought this, but what kind of a God is this? If someone makes a mistake and then for the rest of eternity he's just burning in hell. So there was you know, other things, the, the, the uh, Priests were not a very good character, also. So I got turned off in many ways. So I became an atheist. But then I, I, my, I was traveling around. Actually, uh, should I tell you the whole story? You want, to, you want to hear how I came? It's a little interesting. I was growing up in Southern California. And I was a wild little Southern California kid. So, uh, in the, you know, in the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, in my sinful activities, I was with a, I was staying at a friend's house. 
И тут мы занимались там всякими вещами, и я был у своего, своего друга в доме с грехом. So on the television I saw one yogi uh, speaking about some spiritual subject. По телевизору я увидел какого-то йога, который мудро говорил какие-то духовные возвышенные темы. And it sounded a little interesting. И это звучало очень интересно для меня. So he had one center in uh, in Los Angeles. И в этом йога был центр в Лос-Анджелесе. So uh, I went to that center. Я отправился в этот центр. And it was a uh, transcendental meditation center. Там, там Mahesh Yogi. And uh, they had these mantras that they were selling. So this mantra, it costs one hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> It was a two-syllable mantra. Sixty dollars each. But I was innocent, naive about spiritual things, so I paid the money. Now, because of inflation, it cost a thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars each. Thousand dollars for the mantra. Yeah. Yeah. Good business. <laughs> so anyway, I was doing this meditation. Fifteen minutes in the morning, fifteen minutes in the evening. And it kind of helped me slow down a little bit, you know. A little bit from the passion to a little more of goodness. So I was doing this meditation and I was studying different philosophies also. And so I got this one book by uh, Baba Ram Das. Who was a famous American guru in the, in the, in the States. And then I decided I should get away from all my friends there and just, you know, just get away that way I could concentrate more on my spiritual life. So I left home. I went traveling. So I was reading this book and in this book Baba Ramdas, he says, as one advances in spiritual life, one becomes detached from material things, friends, family, material life in general. So I thought, okay, this sounds good. So a couple days later, after reading that, all my things were stolen. So I thought, okay, this is good. I couldn't give it up on my own, so God has taken it from me. So now I, I felt like I was really going on a spiritual uh, journey. So I decided that I would I would fly to the Bahamas. It's uh, some islands on the on the uh, on the uh, east coast of America, southeast coast of America. Bahamas. So I thought I'll just go down to the islands there and do my spiritual life and just, you know, live a nice spiritual life. So I flew there and I was very disappointed. It was very materialistic. Worse than Los Angeles. So I decided the next day I'm going I'm going to fly back to Miami. 
Тогда я решил, что я полечу в Майами в следующий день. So, but that night, someone stole all my money. Но в эту ночь мне украли все деньги. So now I don't have any money. Теперь у меня не было денег. I just have the clothes on my back. Только была одежда и сзади рюкзак. And my ticket and my passport. Мой билет и мой паспорт. But I was, I had, I had never been so happy before in my life. <coughs> because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was going on a journey, the spiritual journey, and I would never return to material life. So I really felt like I was in the hands of God. Я действительно чувствовал, что я нахожусь в руках Господа. So I went back to Miami and I'm hitchhiking, not knowing where I'm going. I'm just, all right, God, now what? Я просто автостопом добрался до Майами. So one person picked me up and he said, you know, maybe you should go to Key West and get a job. It's the southernmost tip city of America in Florida. Это я один человек, когда автостопом поймал, он мне сказал, что ты должен отправиться в центр, там, там одно место и найти себе работу. So I got a job there. И я нашел там работу. So I'm still reading this book by Baba Ramdas. I'm still reading this book by Baba Ramdas. Я продолжал читать книгу Баба Рамдас. And at, I finished reading it. At the end of the book, he recommends spiritual books to read, and one of them was Bhagavad Gita. So I went to the public library there in Key West, and there was four Bhagavad Gitas. So now what? So I picked out the one that looked the most attractive, and it was Prabhupada's. Fortunately. So I took it home, and I read it uh, in five days. And while I'm reading, I'm thinking, this is it. This is the, the end of my journey. И когда я читал, я чувствовал это вот конец моего путешествия. There's no truth higher than this. Нету более истины выше, чем это. So from reading the Bhagavad Gita, I started following the four regular principles, and I was chanting uh, all day long. И прочитав Бхагавад Гиту, я начал с того времени следовать четырем регулирующим принципам и повторял фактически весь день мантру. So. After chanting Hare Krishna for three days, I walked out of my workplace, and uh, there was devotees right there, just uh, maybe a hundred meters from uh, from the door of my workplace. They were having Hare Nam. So I walked over to them and I said, "Hey." That's the same mantra I chant. Where did you get it? <laughs> and I said, oh, you chant Hare Krishna? I said, yeah, all day long. So they preached to me for a couple hours. And then I moved in with them that night. Oh, I forgot to tell you, when I left Los Angeles, I left Los Angeles looking for like a, like a paradise where I could just, you know, do my meditation and do my spiritual life. Paradise? You understand? Anybody here know the word paradise? I was looking for like a paradise. This is a nice place where I could do my spiritual life. So I was thinking it was in the Bahamas, but it wasn't there. So now I'm living in the kind of like a preaching center in Key West, Florida. <coughs> it was just a, just a few devotees trying to keep something together. 
So then they told me about the temple, the main temple in Miami. So they told me to go to Miami and I could get trained up. And when I went to Miami, I was amazed. It was so beautiful. There was about six hectares. You, you go by hectares here or acres? Yes, hectares. 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 It was about six hectares. And five of those hectares was just flowers growing. Because we were sending flowers to all the temples for their deity worship in America. And they had 80 mango trees. So we had mango pie, mango juice, mango nectar, mango cake. We had mango coming out of our ears. <laughs> Chutney, everything. And there was banana trees and just all kinds of fruit trees. It was just, it was a real, it was a paradise. There were swans and peacocks and ducks, just very beautiful. So Krishna fulfilled my desire. So, my first service was picking flowers. And washing Krishna's pots. And then, and then two months later, they asked me to, if I would like to distribute Prabhupada's books. So I thought, well, the books is what brought me to Krishna consciousness, so it would probably be a good thing to do. So that's been my service now for 31 years. And uh, I can say it's a very nice service. <laughs> because it actually has helped, these books actually helped so many people come out of their uh, distress. There was one devotee, he was uh, distributing books uh, office to office. And he went to one office and there was a business meeting going on. There was about 10 businessmen there. So the, the devotee, he, he saw that there was a meeting going on, so he said, oh, sorry, excused himself, he was going to walk out. So the chairman said, no, 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 please come back. He saw that he had Bhagavad Gita. So he told them, please give each of my colleagues here, give them a Bhagavad Gita and I'll pay for it. So he was very happy. <laughs> so uh, it happened to be the end of the meeting. And the devotee decided to wait. To wait so that he could speak to the chairman. So he asked the chairman, uh, excuse me, why are you so enthusiastic that all your friends get the Bhagavad Gita? He said, well, I'll tell you something interesting that happened to me in my life. He said, I have a wife and two children. And my wife was giving me many, many, many problems. <laughs> 
И моя жена мне дала, принесла в жизни очень, очень много проблем. And we couldn't work it out. И мы не смогли сработаться. And then my children started giving me problems. И потом дети начали мне причинять проблемы. They were on her side. Они были на ее стороне, мать. So I didn't know what to do. Я не знал, что мне делать. So I started drinking. Я начал выпивать. And eventually I became an alcoholic. И через какое-то время я превратился в алкоголика. And eventually I, my life just became just miserable. И моя жизнь, она стала настолько в страданиях и ужасном существовании. So и тогда я решил, лучше тогда я просто покончу с собой. Я был в своей комнате и уже вот-вот готов был выпить яд. But then I just happened to look up, and in my bookcase there was a Bhagavad Gita. Тогда я посмотрел и увидел, что на шкафчике лежала Бхагавад Гита. So I thought, maybe there's something there. И я тогда подумал, ну, может быть, что-то там надо посмотреть. So I brought it down. Я взял ее. And I read the first paragraph. И я прочитал первый параграф. And as soon as I read the first paragraph, I felt so much relief. И как только я прочитал просто первый параграф, то я чувств почувствовал такое сильное облегчение. And I kept it. И я продолжал читать. Читать. Я прочитал всю Бхагавадгиту всего за три дня. I was only reading Bhagavad Gita, eating a little bit and sleeping a little bit. Я полностью погрузился в Бхагавадгиту, всего лишь чуть-чуть скушал и чуть-чуть спал. And he said, when I finish Reading the Bhagavad Gita, I had never felt so happy in my life. И как только я закончил чтение Бхагавад Гиты, то я не испытывал настолько сильного счастья в своей жизни. So then I went back to my family. Тогда я отправился к своей семье. And by the mercy of Krishna, all the family problems worked out. And now to this day, every day I read Bhagavad Gita. И вот с того времени от нас своим родным и как-то все конфликты уладились, и вот с того дня я каждый день читаю Бхагавадгиту. И все мои соседи, все имеют Бхагавадгиту, друзья. So there's many, many examples of people becoming free of their distress, of their anxiety from taking to Krishna consciousness. И существует множество историй, примеров тех людей, которые были в страждущем положении, ходили в страдания и с помощью книг Шилы Прабхупады облегчили свое существование. And then Krishna, he says here in the end that, that there's also people who, who go to him searching for knowledge. И также здесь Кришна говорит, что существуют люди, которые обращаются, ища какие-то знания. So this knowledge that's being given to us by Krishna is actually the most Valuable knowledge. И то, что нам дает здесь Кришна в Бхагавадгите, это самое ценное знание. And he says, Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, Pavitramidam Uttamam, Pratyak Savagamam Nam, Susukam Tarkatamavidam. That this knowledge is the king of education. И Кришна говорит всем три, что это знание, царь всего знания. There's so much uh, information being given throughout the world. Только существует различная информация в миру. Millions of books. Миллионы книг. But all this information simply entangles one more and more in material life. И вся эта информация со всех этих книг, она все больше и больше запутает нас в материальной жизни. But if one reads transcendental literature, then one becomes liberated. Но как только человек начинает читать трансцендентную литературу, то в тот же момент жизнь его освобож... наполняется счастьем и освобождается от страданий. Человек очищается, слушает Кришну. И это сила послания Кришны. Это самый важный секрет из всех секретов. 
So one might say, well, how is it the most secret of all secrets? Because we're, you know, we have it right here. We're reading it right here. How is it a big secret? Кто-то может спросить, ну как же это секрет из всех секретов? Мы же просто читаем открыто. But it's a secret in the sense that to to actually be able to live the teachings of the of of, of Bhagavad Gita, this is difficult. Но секрет заключается в том, что на самом деле жить по слава по Бхагавад Гите вот это. We can read it, but to understand it, one has to be to understand it, one has to be very sincere. And then to actually be able to live it, that's even. And so in that sense, it's a secret. But the secret is within us. No secret находится в нас. Just like here in uh, Latvia, have you heard of this uh, this idea, the the secret? Have you heard of this? Yeah, you're familiar with this. The secret. <laughs> and the idea is just desire. And the universe will reciprocate. Kind of like a, a new age thing. New age. So, but what are they praying for? Everybody is wanting material things. I want a big house. I want a big car. I want this. I want that. So it's just new age materialism. Krishna will fulfill our desires if we want. But we have to know what to desire. What is best for us. So Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he explains what is best for us. The best thing for us is pure devotional service. Because this will satisfy the soul. Prabhupada gives the example of if you take a, a fish out of the out of water and you give the fish you know a nice big home and you give it money and you give it good food, how the fish will never be satisfied. Пропада приводит такой пример, что если мы возьмем рыбу из воды и поместим ее в красивую дорогую машину, поместим ее в дом, накормим ее, то она не будет счастлива от этого. So we're kind of like that. We're kind of like fish out of water. И мы тоже своего рода такие рыбы, которые которые вытащили на сушу. And we'll never actually be satisfied until we're again into the pure devotional service of Krishna. This is the only thing that will completely satisfy the soul. Because this is the only place where there's no selfishness. In pure devotional service, one is only thinking of how to please Krishna. And by pleasing Krishna, then we become fully satisfied. Atato Brahmadigyasa. Now is the time to understand what is the absolute truth. So Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitrangu Bhutam is the this knowledge is the purest knowledge. Because it's being given by Krishna. And Krishna he is the most pure. He's, Krishna is so pure that simply by us getting closer to Krishna, we also become pure. 
И Кришна настолько чист, что когда мы приближаемся к Нему, то мы тоже очищаемся. And to the degree that we distance ourselves from Krishna, then we become impure. And once one is completely pure, then one is also completely satisfied. Just like if you, uh, if you have a, a tree and you put water at the root of the tree, then all the branches, the tree is, is nourished. The tree will not be nourished if you put the water on the leaf. So by pleasing Krishna, we become fully satisfied. But by just trying to please the senses, it's like putting water on the leaf and trying to nourish the tree. He goes on to say that that uh, that it, this is directly experienced. This spiritual uh, existence is directly experienced. And it's joyfully performed. This is the result of, of Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada, he once said that if you're not happy in Krishna consciousness, this means you're doing something wrong. Yeah, this is just a, a side effect of Krishna consciousness is that one is happy. Prabhupada said, I've gone to, to turn the, the hippies into happies. So, this is Krishna consciousness. So, is there any questions or comments? Yes. Devotional service is uh, to Krishna is difficult to attain, at least compared to liberation. Uh, do you have any good proposal where to get it? <laughs> Translate. Преданное служение оно трудно достижимое, чем освобождение. И что вы можете предложить, как обрести это чистое преданное служение? Devotional service is also liberation. That's the highest liberation. There's other types of liberation you become. You can go to the uh, impersonal Brahma Jyoti. Or you could merge into the body of Krishna. But this doesn't actually satisfy the soul. So, uh, although it, 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 it is a little difficult to attain uh, devotional service. Uh, and there's a reason for that. If you attain something very easily, then you also give it up easily. But if you attain something with great difficulty, then you'll never want to give that up. Prabhupada said it, it's easy for those who are not complicated. And difficult for those who are too complex. So it doesn't have to be difficult. Robert said it's just a, uh, 
It's just a matter of sincerity. If we're sincere, then it's not difficult. И Прабхупада часто говорил, что вопрос заключается в нашей искренности. Если мы искренне, Кришна ответит нам. And to be sincere means simply to to follow the instructions that are given to us. И быть искренним это просто следовать наставлениям, которые даны нам. The process in this age is made so easy. Этот процесс в этот век он сделан настолько простым. Kalar doshne dhe rajan asti eko mahodya kirtanadi krishna. This, this age of Kali is filled with many faults. Wherever you look, there are so many faults. But the one good quality of this age is that simply by chanting Hare Krishna, one can become completely purified. Это качество заключается в том, что просто благодаря повторению Хари Кришна вы сможете полностью очиститься от всего неблагоприятного. И подготовить себя к возвращению домой в Царство Господа. So we have so much information here. У нас столько информации. Just like there's, there's one joke. Как существует одна шутка. You want to hear a transcendental joke? Хотите слышать трансцендентную шутку? There was one man. He went to a to a Catholic church. And in the lobby, there was a a phone, a, a golden phone. And there was a sign that says, five thousand dollars, call God." And the person said, "Whoa, very expensive." So then he went to a. He was checking out different religions, so he went to a Baptist church. Same thing. He goes into the lobby, signed five thousand dollars, call God. Видел на табличку, там было написано 5000 долларов. Позвони Господу. So then he goes into a a a mosque, Islam mosque. И потом он отправился в ислам, в исламскую мечеть. And he goes in the lobby again, same thing. Call God, five thousand dollars. Он зашел туда в молитвенное молитвенное место, видел там опять эту табличку. And then he went into a Jewish synagogue, and he goes into the lobby. Same thing. Five thousand dollars. Call God. Then he he's traveling around. And he ends up in India. And he goes into the temple, and there's a sign there that says, "Call God, ten rupees." <laughs> so the man thinks, wow, it's so cheap here. He goes up to the Brahmin and says, why is it so cheap here? Oh, remember, it's so expensive everywhere else. He said, here it's a local call. <laughs> God appeared in India. So, so much information of God. We have the Srimad Bhagavatam. Eighteen volumes, so much information about God. The activities of God. The beauty of God. Just like, and then we have the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So many other books are coming out. And you look at the other religions, what do they have? In the Bible? In the Christian religion they have the Bible. They're very limited information. In Islam they have the Quran. Very limited. We have so much information. That, that, that helps us develop our attraction to Krishna. 
И у нас столько существует информации, чтобы развить отношения с Богом. But you have this Srimad Bhagavatam translated up to ten. Ten canto. Oh. Most of people here read Russian. Oh, very nice. See, so much information is here that that helps us. So we have the holy name, we have the transcendental literatures, the association of devotees. So, you know, so many ways we could uh, advance and actually become liberated. Any other questions? Yes. So you offer that result to Krishna. You say that whatever you do, or all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as austerities in form, they should be done as an offering unto me. You know the verse? А что бы вы ни делали, через какие аскезы совершали покаяние, все это отдавайте мне, предлагайте мне. So everything that we do should be an offering to Krishna. И все, что бы мы ни делали, мы должны предлагать Кришне. And if you think about it, actually this body, it belongs to Krishna. Если мы подумаем хорошенько, то мы поймем, что это тело принадлежит Кришне. It's not our body. Это не наше тело. So whatever is done, it should be done as an offering to Krishna. И все, что мы не делали, мы должны делать это как жертву и отдачу Господу Кришне. It's his body. All these bodies are Krishna's bodies. Это все тела, наше тело принадлежит Кришне. They're not meant to be utilized for our own sense gratification. И они не должны быть предназначены для собственного чувства наслаждения. But for pleasing Krishna. Но для удовлетворения Кришне. Sarva Pari the Near Book Fund. The devotional service means to engage our senses in the service. Of the master of the senses. И говорится сара патхи не могут там, что наши чувства должны быть задействованы в служении хозяина этих чувств. And the two side effects of this is that one becomes free of all material designations. И два аспекта. Один из них это то, что человек отрекается от всех отождествлений. So these material designations, this is the false ego. И все эти отождествления себя с материи это ложное эго. A false ego means we're thinking that we're American or, or Latvian or men or women. This is all false ego. But there's a real ego. And that real ego is that we're part of Krishna. Ego means one's conception of one's identity. 
So our real identity is that we're part of Krishna. We're servants of Krishna. And when we fully realize this, we'll be fully satisfied. In the Gita, Krishna, he says that uh, when the self-realized devotee, when he is walking or talking or running, he knows he's not doing anything at all. It's just the senses interacting with the objects. So, uh, we're meant to utilize this body fully in the service of Krishna. Not easy, but possible. Practice makes perfect. They have that saying here also, yeah. all the cultures. So the more we practice, the more it becomes easier. So this this uh, path of, of spiritual life, it's, it's a royal path. We're on the path to go back to the spiritual world. So on this royal path there will be many tests, many obstacles. But Krishna, he says, Machchita Saradagari Mat Prasada Trishasi. He says, if you become conscious of me, you'll cross over all the obstacles on your path to pure devotional service. If, however, you act out of false ego and you don't hear me, then you'll be lost. Very scary thing, you know, feeling just to be lost. Any of you ever get lost? It's a strange feeling. <laughs> or sometimes people get amnesia. You know amnesia? People hit their head and they just forget. They have no idea who they are. I have one friend, he was riding his bike. And he crashed. And when he got up, he didn't know who he was. Didn't know his name. Didn't know where he was going. Didn't know where he lived. Nothing. So he's like, he just he picks up his bike and he's walking along. Doesn't want to know where he's going. So as he's walking along, one devotee sees him. So his devotee starts talking to him. So the devotee asks him, so what kind of work do you do? He said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know my name. I hit my head, I don't know anything. So the devotee said, I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> You're Krishna Das, you're the eternal servant of Krishna. <laughs> he said, well, that's something at least. <laughs> so, the devotee kept preaching to him. And this person liked the devotee. So he went and he stayed with him at his apartment. And became a devotee. And now he's been a book distributor for five years. But he wanted to find out who he was materially also. 
so he uh, the place where he crashed was near the University of Santa Barbara's so he put he made a picture of himself and he put a sign under it and said I crashed on my bike I have amnesia I don't know who I am does anybody know who I am please call this number <laughs> So some people called up and said, yeah, I know who you are, you're here, you're this, that, you know. So he found out who he was materially. But practically everybody in the material world, they have amnesia. They think that they're the material body. They've forgotten the spiritual reality. That they're the eternal servant to Krishna. So when we go out and we distribute books, we're helping them uh, remember who they are. So this is why Srila Prabhupada considered uh, book distribution to be the most important activity in our society. Okay, anything else? Yes. There are so many years that have been distributed so many books, so but the uh, reality is that not so many uh, people join to us. So how to improve this? Or I've you heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> you see, these books are not just books. No, they're deities. So, we don't know the plan of Krishna in the form of these books. A few years ago there was one young man, about 19 years old, he wanted to know about God. So he went to his mother and he, and he asked her, Zer, I want to know about God, can you give me any advice? And she said, well, have you read the Bible yet? So he said, yeah, but I didn't get much out of it. Any other suggestions? And then she remembered, you know, 20 years ago, I got this book called Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Maybe there's something there for you. So he read that book. Now he's been a devotee for three years. So that book was sitting there for 20 years. And then finally, it made it a body. Yeah. So many amazing stories. There's one person in the, he was on a walk in a forest. And he had a dog with him. And he's walking through the forest. And his dog, he starts sniffing on something. So his master goes over and says, what are you sniffing on there? So he moved away the leaves. And it was the science of self-realization. And he said, what is this science of self-realization? So he picked it up and he started reading it. He read the whole book sitting there. Became a devotee. 
first time in history that a dog became the varma pradarsha the guru. <laughs> and he became a big book distributor. And there's another similar incident. The person was he was in the forest. He was on a on a uh, nature walk in the forest. And you know how sometimes in the on these uh, nature paths, sometimes there's these uh, uh, toilets with little shacks. You know, and they have a, a toilet. You know. Когда вы прогуливаетесь в таких ухоженных местах, то там есть соответствующие такие будки, туалеты. And this is one of the old types. You know, had the, the water tank up here, and you, and you pull it, you know, and it flushes. Старого образца, где там бачок наверху, вы нажимаете, дергаете за ничего. So he went to the bathroom and he pulled it. Он зашел в туалет. And the whole thing just crashed. Нажал по этой, дернул за этой веревкой, и все это упало. Water just flew on everywhere. But there was a book in it. Bhagavad Gita. And he, he said, what is this? Bhagavad Gita, it's all completely wet, you know, it's just like him. But he, he took it with him, he let it dry out. He read it and became a devotee. So, another time a person was... Uh, he was outside of one store. He was eating a watermelon outside of a store. He was, he was outside of a store eating a watermelon. Over a trash can. He was spitting the seed. He spitting the seed. The and, the, and the watermelon slipped out of his hand and fell into the trash can. And the watermelon and yeah. So he thought, you know, generally I don't reach back into the trash can, but that was a good watermelon, yes. <laughs> so he reached in to get the watermelon. And he pulled out a book. Bhagavad Gita. He also became a devotee. So even people throw books away, even they still make devotees. There's one disciple of uh, Prabhupada, Dhruva Maharaj Das. He's a very um, senior devotee in our society. Before he came to Krishna consciousness, he was a bum. He was going around digging trash out of, out of uh, you know, trash cans. And he also got a book that was in the trash. And he's, now he's been a devotee for 35 years. One time a devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, sometimes the people, they throw our books in the trash. And Prabhupada said, what do you expect? They throw their babies in the trash. Anybody have any idea how many abortions there are a year in the world? No. Any idea? For this year? No, every year. Over 20 million. Over 20 million. In India, 7 million. So crazy. So degrading. So this book distribution can actually help people understand what is right, what is wrong. So I was told to keep speaking until someone comes in and says, the prashad is ready. <laughs> he was supposed to tell me, nobody told me. <laughs> 
Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. 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 Jai